back to the way the native crop is. We're going to do something a bit different today. This video, I'm going to show you how to make one of these pouches which you can use for a speed loader. You need these things if you're going to carry a handgun for defense in the, in the woods. Just in case six shots doesn't do it, got to have uh, another six ready and waiting and quick to reload. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at uh, how to make one of these pouches by yourself. And what we're going to start with is we're going to mold the leather. You can see that being done here. I've made a little jig, taking very heavy leather. Even though the leather is very thick, don't be fooled, you can stretch it. As you can see here, what I did is I made a, a little post of the same dimensions that the uh, speed loader is. And uh, that molded, I just trimmed off the excess leather. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a fastener into this pouch before I sew the back on to make it a little bit easier. So when you do something like this, you got to have the right depth of a uh, fastener, something that can get all the way through the leather, and uh, set it on a little anvil. These fasteners often come with a little pouch that you can put on there and uh, just it on, basically rivet it on. Now as I do this, I don't want to over it. So I just tap it a bit, feel it, if it wiggles a bit, and tap it a little more. And you wiggle. Let's give it just a little bit more. Should just about do it. And there's one half of the fastener nicely attached. So, next step, I'm going to have to sew the backing onto this newly formed pouch. And uh, in order to sew it, you want to do the best way to do this stuff is to cut a sewing groove or a stitching groove into the leather I'm using a special kind of scribe here and that uh, does a very nice job it just uh, the right edge follows the edge of the leather and the inside cutter just cuts a nice little groove taking off a nice curl of leather and what I find I usually have to do is I do it about, make it about three passes. That way it's deep enough for the stitching to lie under the surface of the uh, leather and it doesn't wear off the abrasion. I got that part done. I'm going to do the backing part as well. And again, I just use that tool, just follow along the edges. It's actually quite fun. We'll just speed it up a little bit here. Uh, two passes. I'll uh, do three passes. And that should be about deep enough. Now I'm going to bevel the edges of the leather. And I've got another little tool that's specially made for that. It's Nice and sharp, and run it along that that edge there, and just bevel it off a little bit. This is in preparation for burnishing the edge of the leather. But we'll see that after this is done. So we'll just kind of speed this up a little bit, and we'll do this one too. This is kind of like carving. might know 
those mic techniques are maybe a little rougher and not so meticulous as some fine leather crafters, but they just make this stuff to use. So it's, uh, I'm not making it to sell, I make it for myself. I'm just licking the edge of that leather. Just get it wet a little bit and I take my burnishing tool, which can accommodate various thicknesses of leather. And really just that action of rubbing it across the edge of leather when it's wet, it just flattens down all the grains and compacts them and makes them shiny. It puts a nice finished edge on the leather. So we'll just speed this up a little bit, get this job done. Now let's do the backing piece as well, real quick. make sure everything fits the way you expect it to. The grooves are cut in for the stitching, the edges are burnished. Now we can make our holes. And what I use is uh, one of these cutting forks and I just pound it in with a hammer on top of a piece of wood. And get it. Nice little diamond cuts right through the leather. Pull that tool out. Each time it's yeah, you know, it's a little bit slow. It does a nice job, gives you very evenly spaced stitch holes. As I, this is a multi-pronged fork that I'm using. So as I get near the bend, you'll notice I'm going to switch to a two two prong one. It's actually a, it used to be a multi-prong one that had some of the forks break off. So kind of handy for doing the curves now. And once I get into the straight stretch, then we go back to the more efficient uh, multi-prong fork. Pound this last one in here. Punched. I'm going to take that and I'm going to transfer the pattern of those punch holes to the backing piece of leather. Uh, I could just go ahead and use the fork right off the bat, but just, in, just to make really sure that the holes line up and things don't go out of sync, it's worth it to spend a little bit of time with a piercing needle like this. And I'll just hold the pieces together mark all my holes and make sure this stays lined up. Because once I've got all these holes punched through, just, just a little bit, enough to mark it, then I can go with the uh, cutting fork and punch them right through to make it easier for stitching. But this leather is pretty thick, so you, you just got to cut your holes first. So, cut my last one through. Everything has stayed lined up while I was doing that. And now we can uh, use those marked holes and use that cutting fork again. Uh, in this case, because I have that, that bell tube piece on the back, I have to kind of get it on the fourth through just on the edge there. So it's a little bit awkward, but no big deal. Maybe I could have done this first before putting a belt loop on the back in retrospect. But we manage. Now I'll go to the little Two fork tool, do the curve. It's all punched out. And 
sink with the piece that goes above it. The well, next step, step is to uh, let's get some needle and thread going here. Not really thread, this is waxed flax that I use. It's a good, tough material that can last forever. Stitch leather this way, this is, in my opinion, this is the best way to do it. Now, I'm pulling off a length of that flax. You can see I'm pulling off a pretty long length there for such a little uh, pouch that I intend to sew with it. But that's because uh, it's surprising how much flax you need to sew a small length uh, seam like this. So I always pull off a little bit more than I think I need because if you don't have enough and then you have to start over midway through, it's kind of a pain. It's not really the best way. So, let's put the glasses on so I can thread this needle. Put that one through, put the other end through another needle. Put these pieces together, get them lined up in the first hole. And take the needle and get her through that first hole. needles push through nice and easy because the holes have been cut with that, that fork chisel. Start off by getting both links the same. And then it's basically uh, what I call just a figure eight pattern. It's probably a more correct term for it. But I just take one needle, run it through one way, and I take the other needle run it through the other way, through the same hole that, that the previous needle just went through. Pull it through. After every pull through like that, I always give it a good tug. Make sure those stitches are sunk right into the leather good and seated. So I'll carry on. This is really quite simple. The longer your piece of flax, it's uh, the trickier it is sometimes to keep uh, the two ends from overlapping and getting tangled. But after a while, you get get sort of a method to it. So here, going through again from both sides, give it a little tug, and we just continue on through. And now I've reached the end, all the way to the other end. And I've back stitched four or five stitches. So I've gone right back over the stitches that I previously made going in the reverse direction. Just uh, four or five stitches is, is about right. So it's, these, uh, these holes are going to be pretty tight for the needle to get through because some thread has gone through there already. And once I've back stitched it, it's just a matter of taking a sharp knife. You cut it right flush to the to the leather. Keep things nice and neat. Make sure you don't slip with that knife and make a cut in the leather. Don't ask me how I know that. So there we got the pouch nicely stitched to its backing. The edges are burnished. Everything is nice and neat. At least uh, neat according to my standards. And let's take this speed loader and give her a little test fit in here. Make sure everything is going as expected. And it's just a perfect fit. Nice and snug. Not too hard. Not too loose came from making that molding plug the right size to begin with. So what I'm going to do next is I've got to figure out where to make that hole to the flap to place the other half of the fastener. So I'll look it over a little bit, see how much bend I want to get into it. 
get it centered a little bit. I'll take this wax pencil and uh, mark it across where it should be, and down the line where it should be. And that should do it. So now that we have the uh, location marked, let's take a punch. And you don't want to use too big of a punch when you make the holes for these uh, fasteners. So the fastener stem should go through your pipe if you don't want it wiggling around there to lose strength in it. You just pound through one way and then through the other way just to make sure everything is clean. have it. Okay, now we've got to put the other half in, but I found out that the stem on my fastener, even though it's for the thicker leather, it's, this leather is so thick that the stem won't protrude above the surface enough to uh, rivet onto the uh, other part of the uh, fastener. So get around that I'm just using my that little tool that I used to cut the grooves and I'm just gonna shave this leather to a slightly thinner thickness just in the area that the fastener is gonna sit so I do that of course on the inside of the flap where it's not so visible. So push this thing through give it a look and see if I've thinned out the leather enough. curved side facing up on the angle this time because that button has a curve to it. You don't want to flatten out the button when you pound on it. And I'll place the uh, other half on there. Get my little punch in place. Let's flatten her down a bit. just to make sure that it's evenly pounded in. I'm going to do this stuff right because you're going to depend on this fastener working for a long time in the future. There we go. That seems to work nice. Speed loader in there. Make sure it all fits properly. Okay, so we're good to go here. Now, what to do next? I'm gonna. I've left this till the end because I want to make sure all this stuff is in place so that when I cut off the excess leather, I can kind of even things out things are a little bit off center or something like that. Maybe uh, drawing of the uh, cut lines and place it on my cutting table and with a sharp knife just go around it. It's, uh, you don't want to press too hard with your knife. Just kind of do it on three or four passes, lighter passes. You can that way it's uh, easier to uh, get accurate and not cut into your table too much. So, there we got that. Cut off some of the fuzz there. It's looking nice. Okay, so now we have that top flap cut to shape. Let's do some edging and burnishing on this thing just to finish it off. I'm going to do it on the inside and outside. Bottom side done. Do the top side. And speed this up a little bit. Let's 
round it off, so apply a little bit of saliva and burn us like crazy. all done let's make sure this thing fits in the, for the speed loader and uh, if there's any problems with it we'll address it but everything is good that belt loop might be a bit on the tight side but I can easily stretch that and as you can see from the pouch itself you can stretch leather a lot so uh, I think we have a good good pouch here now thanks for watching